Okay, let's continue our overview tour. Let's take a look at creating some uh, interactivity with a character. So let's, uh, let's get a character. Let's go into the resources database, open up the characters folder, and we have body part characters. Those are characters that were created with multiple body parts and animated by forward kinematics. Here are skin characters. So, for example, we're going to work with the uh, Eva character. We're going to uh, bring that character into the 3D workspace, just drag and drop. Where this character came from, um, the character was created in a 3D application, XSI, Maya, 3D Studio Max, Lightwave. And a skin character is a single geometry mesh that has a weight map uh, onto a skeleton that controls it for the purpose of, of deforming it so you can move it around and pose it and animate it and keyframe it. And then it has a texture map that's applied to it with UV coordinates. So that's created in the 3D application and it is exported using the virtuals exporter for the appropriate 3D application and it creates a resource, a .nmo resource, which is exported into this folder. Then uh, each of the individual animations that, uh, that the character does, for instance, we'll go up here and look in the animations folder in skin character animations. Here's the folder for Eva. All of these animations were individually keyframed and exported one at a time as animation files only as .nmo resources into this folder. So each of those animations then can be uh, associated with the character here in virtuals. So what we're going to do is we're going to select some animations. Let's select the uh, walk animation, the wait animation, and the walk backward animation. I'm just holding down the control key on the keyboard to multiple select. And I'm going to associate those with uh, the character by dragging them over to the character and the bounding box turns yellow and I can let go. And now they've been associated. So I'm going to look here in the level manager and I'm opening up the global assets and here's characters and there's Eva. And I can expand that to see here's the animations that were associated. And uh, also if I wanted to look at the uh, individual skeletal parts that were uh, keyframed uh, controllable for those actions, I could access those there. The first thing that I'm going to do before I go any farther, just a good workflow in Virtuals, is uh, with the character selected here in the Level Manager, I'm going to set its initial condition by hitting this button right here, Set IC for Selected. What that does is it establishes a point in space where um, you can always return to, very useful in the future. If the character is off screen or hidden or there's some control issue, then I can uh, stop the um, play and set the IC, I go back to the IC and everything that had its IC set will return to its initial condition. So here in this view I'm going to um, uh, basically control my, uh, my view using my middle mouse key. So my middle mouse scroll button scro allows me to scroll for a uh, dolly in and dolly out and then if I mouse down on the middle button I can pan and then if I hold down the Alt key and mouse down, that allows me to orbit. And I can maximize that view by clicking on the tab. So now I can see the character in the 3D layout. So I have my character here, and uh, the character now has these animations that are associated with it. And I'm looking in the schematic view, and there are no scripts yet. So I need to create some scripts for interactivity. So let's go to the building blocks and let's get some scripts that will allow us to uh, control this character's behavior. So to begin with, I'm going to go to the characters folder and get a movement controller. So I'll get a character controller here. And if I want to know how any of these building blocks function, I can, uh, in, this, in this area in building blocks, I can always just double click on them and that will launch the uh, online help file. So to use this character controller, I'm just going to drag it over the character until the bonding box turns yellow, and then let go. And you can see a script has started here for Eva. 
So this character controller is going to associate the animations with an input device that emulates a joystick uh, controller. So a stand animation, which is an idle, is uh, no input. And I'm going to associate that with the wait animation that was imported for this character. The walk animation, I'm going to associate that with walk, walk backwards with walk backward. And uh, we didn't import a run, so we'll just leave that for now. So I have this character controller building blocks, this script now. Now I need to have a way that I can interact with this character controller, a way to provide input to it, an input-output device um, script. So I'm going to open up controllers and go to the keyboard. And then I'm going to get this keyboard controller and uh, drag that onto the character. Again, the bounding box turns yellow. Let go. And now I have a keyboard controller that will allow the numpad on my keyboard to function like a joystick. So uh, what I can do now is um, I've got my animation set up. I've got my scripts to control the character. Um, I can hit the play button. And now I can see my character is in the, in the idle action. And I'm going to up arrow on the numpad, and my character walks forward. Right arrow turns right, left arrow turns left, and then I can up arrow and right arrow at the same time, walking my character into a circle. And when I stop, my character returns to the idle state, the stand animation. Now I'm going to down arrow and walk backwards. With my character off the screen now, I'm going to stop play and I can return to my initial condition by hitting this IC button down here in the lower right-hand corner. So there's a very quick look at uh, controlling interactivity of a character and its animations.